Siti Chapula, Jesu Chapula, Siti Chapula, Jesu Chapula. Wake up in the moonlight singing, wake up in the moonlight singing. Siti Chapula, Jesu Chapula, Siti Chapula, Jesu Chapula. Wake up in the moonlight singing. During a choir rehearsal, we tend to rehearse music for an upcoming performance, and we use that music as a vehicle to look at um, concepts in musical skill, vocal skill, and just general aesthetic concepts about the piece itself. We start with a warm-up, which is strictly about improving individual and ensemble vocal skill. During a typical rehearsal for the choir, we go in, um, find our seats, and then Mr. Elpis, the choir director, uh, leads us in some warm-ups. And then, depending on what we're singing, we'll take a piece of music and go over different parts of it. And then we'll segue from the warm-up into rehearsing music. So we'll examine, for example, the text of the piece. If it's a well-known uh, or published piece of poetry, we'll look at what the poet is really trying to say. We'll look at what the composer has added to the poetry, as well as talk about the musical and other concepts that are involved in the piece itself. We'll also look at vocal skills and challenges that are involved in the piece and we talk about how to approach those musically and then also from an individual vocal skill standpoint. I choose music based on a few factors. The first one primarily are the pedagogical and musical skills that are taught by studying this particular piece of music. First and foremost, each choir is different and throughout the year I am constantly assessing the choir and what their individual needs are as an ensemble. And based on those needs and the skills that that individual choir needs to develop, that's how I make the repertoire. So I like to pick something that's challenging yet attainable or look at a multicultural facet of how choral music might be approached in a country other than America. I don't just choose music because I like it. I won't deny that pretty much every piece I choose, I like it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Or really any kind kind of extra musical skill that might be inherent in that particular piece. There's four major voice parts, the bass, tenor, alto, and soprano. The ladies' voice parts are divided into soprano and alto. The gentlemen are all divided into two voice parts, tenor and bass. The tenors are generally asked to sing much higher and in a much brighter tone quality. The basses are usually singing very low and provide the foundation for the chordal structure in the piece. And within each of those parts, there's sometimes subdivisions based on the uh, composition. A composer can choose to split any of the voice parts into two sub-parts, soprano one being the highest, soprano two being lower, and that goes straight through all the way. If I were going to leave Hopewell with some advice for future choirs, my first piece of advice would be to keep singing. The advice that I have for future Hopewell choirs is to really enjoy yourself and really enjoy the music. I think that while we've done some great things together here at Hopewell, the choir program is more about the 230 students that are singing than necessarily about the person leading it. Well, it's important to develop the fundamental skills that are required to sing successfully in a choir. Singing is about aesthetics and about staying emotionally connected to music and communicating that emotion that you have found in the music. It's not as worthwhile. So always enjoy yourself and enjoy that part of the music. I would also say, give your teacher a hard time. Yeah, yeah, yeah.